great disturbance in the force, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. I fear something terrible has happened. Greetings, cadets. In this segment, we're going to wire up an 80 mega chip so that it can function independently from the Arduino Uno. Then, using the Arduino Uno as a programmer, we will upload our Enterprise Refit sketch to the 80 mega chip. Once this has been done, we will be able to run our entire Enterprise Refit sketch using only components which have been added to a breadboard. So, without any further ado, let's get cracking. Once again, we'll need a breadboard, an Arduino Uno, and some jumper wires. We also need to add the following components. An 80 mega 328 chip, a 16 megahertz quartz crystal, a 10 kilo ohm pull-up resistor, and a couple of 22 picofarad ceramic capacitors. Let's get back to our breadboard, where we check to make sure that the external power supply is not connected for the moment. Before we do anything else, we need to bridge the lower and upper positive power rails, and also the lower and upper ground rails, using jumper wires. Now we add our 80 mega chip to the breadboard, across the gutter, and in such a way that the notch is pointing towards the right. This means that leg 1 will be in the upper right hand corner of the chip. Moving in an anti-clockwise direction, we count up to pin 8 which we connect to the ground rail of the breadboard. We count around to the other side of the chip, to leg 22, which we also connect to the ground rail of the breadboard. From here on it's easy. We connect leg 7 to the positive rail, and on the opposite side of the chip, we also connect legs 20 and 21 to the positive rail of the breadboard. We connect leg 1 to the positive rail of the breadboard using a 10k pull-up resistor. Leg 1 is the reset leg of the 80 mega, and it causes the chip to reset when it's in a low state. By connecting it to the positive rail, we make sure that the chip's reset switch is in the high state and the 80 mega chip won't constantly be resetting itself. Legs 9 and 10 are responsible for the timing of the chip, to which we connect a 16 MHz crystal, which is far more accurate than the 80 mega's internal timer. Finally, just to make sure that everything runs smoothly, we connect rows 9 and 10 to the ground rail using the 22 picofarad ceramic capacitors. Well done, cadets! We've just built what is commonly referred to as a Beduino. For all intents and purposes, this is a very basic bare-bones Arduino Uno on a breadboard. In this, the second part of our segment, we will program our 80 mega chip with the Enterprise Refit sketch so that it can be used to drive our final circuit board. Our first step is to upload a sketch to the Arduino Uno, which turns it into an in-systems programmer, or ISP. Before we start working, we need to make sure that our Arduino Uno is not connected to any form of external power supply. We connect our Arduino Uno to our consoles and open the Arduino user interface application. We go to the Tools menu and make sure that the board type is Arduino Uno and that it is connected to the correct COM port. Now we go to the File menu, then Examples and select Arduino ISP. We load the sketch and burn it into the Arduino Uno by pressing the Upload button. We notice the TX and RX lights of the Arduino Uno flash briefly as the ISP sketch is uploaded. If everything went OK, we should see the message Done Uploading and no error reports in the lower part of the screen. 
Next, we connect the programmer to our 80 mega circuit. We will draw power for the circuit directly from the Arduino programmer. This means we also need to make sure that the breadboard is not connected to any form of external power supply. Focusing on the power pins of the Arduino Uno, we connect the ground pin to the lower ground rail of the breadboard and we connect the 5 volt pin of the Arduino Uno to the lower positive rail of the breadboard. We connect pin 13 of the Arduino Uno to leg 19 of the 80 mega chip, pin 12 to leg 18 of the chip and Arduino pin 11 to leg 17. Our last connection is Arduino pin 10 which gets connected to reset leg 1 on the 80 mega. In this configuration, the 80 mega chip is ready to be programmed by the Arduino ISP. We reopen our Arduino user interface application and once again we click on the tools menu to make sure that we have selected the correct board and COM port. We scroll down to the programmer setting and select the option Arduino as ISP. By doing this, we instruct our Arduino Uno board to act as an in-systems programmer. We click the Tools menu again and select the option Burn Bootloader. We should always burn the bootloader, even if we order the 80 mega chip from suppliers who say the bootloader would be preloaded, because one never knows who to trust nowadays. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be Russia. Sort of a double negative. It only takes a few seconds before the message done burning bootloader appears. At this point, we can open our enterprise refit sketch. We allow our cursor to hover over the upload button and then press the shift key on our consoles. The wording in the message bar changes from Upload to Upload using Programmer. Once this message appears, we click the Upload button. The sketch gets compiled and then uploaded to our 80 mega chip on the breadboard via the Arduino Uno. We notice that the TX and RX lights flash like crazy during the upload process. When it completes, we see the message done uploading and if there are no errors in the lower window, it means everything went smoothly. Now we'll take a closer look at the 80 mega chip and see which legs of the 80 mega correspond to which pins of the Arduino Uno. Leg 1, as we've already learned, is the reset leg of the chip. Leg 2 corresponds with pin 0 which we do not use in our Enterprise Refit sketch. Leg 3 corresponds with Arduino pin 1, to which we've connected our red alert switch. Legs 4, 5 and 6 correspond with Arduino pins 2, 3 and 4. These are used by the shift register to control our 7 sets of floodlights via the Darlington array. Leg 7 and 8 are the 80 megas power supply and legs 9 and 10 are the clock pins of the 80 mega to which we attach the 16 megahertz crystal. Legs 11 and 12 correspond with pins 5 and 6 of the Arduino Uno which control the yellow and blue color of our deflector dish respectively to allow us to switch between impulse and warp modes. Legs 13 and 14 correspond to output pins 7 and 8 which control the navigation and strobe lights. Then, moving around to the other side, legs 15, 16, 17, 18 and 19 correspond to pins 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13 of the Arduino Uno. These connect to the SD adapter card, which is responsible for playing our sound effects. The speaker connects to leg 15 of the 80 mega chip. 
Legs 20, 21 and 22 are more power inputs and outputs. Legs 23 to 28 of the 80 mega correspond to analog pins A0 to A5 or pins 14 to 19 as we've defined them in the sketch. Pins 14 and 15 light up the photon torpedoes numbers 1 and 2 and pin 16 lights up the phases. Pin 17 is the input switch to toggle impulse and warp modes. Pin 18 connects to the photon torpedo input switch, while pin 19 is the phaser input pin. So, now all we need to do is yank all the jumper wires out of the Arduino Uno and transfer them to our 80 mega chip. Finally, we have our standalone circuit which is ready to be transferred to a PC board. You'll bring thrusters to station. Thrusters at station keeping, sir. So long, and thanks for watching.